Today we're going to be talking about the McFarlane Toys Doom Slayer Phobos version from Doom Eternal. Right out of the box, the Doom Slayer is going to impress your ocular sacs to the 19th degree, or the 666th degree. Yeah, from head to toe, this guy is painted up and detailed like a dream, but it does look like he's missing something, doesn't it? Thankfully, he comes with his super shotgun with included meat hook and his newly attained Doom Blade. You can actually fit the shotgun into either one of his hands, but I like to keep it in the hand that doesn't have the Doom Blade attached to it. Which, there's a little hole over here. You just line this tab up with that hole. It's pretty simple. Anybody can do it. And now the look is absolutely complete, even if his other hand is still molded to the shape of holding a shotgun, making him look like a character model from 50 Cent <laughs> Bulletproof. McFarlane really went above and beyond to make this figure look as accurate as possible. Every angle you can view this figure from, you are going to see amazing amounts of detail and copious amounts of paint on top of it. And just the overall attention to detail to both paint and detail is massive with this figure. I mean, the helmet alone is an absolute fever dream of detail. The little bits between his major armor plates are amazing. His covered abs are amazing. His crotch and crotch pits are beautiful. Never thought I'd ever have to say that. Hell, even his little hairdryer predator mounted shoulder cannon over here is beautiful. Beautifully painted and detailed as well. Wow. Yeah, McFarlane Doom Slayer is an absolute treat to the eye. And whether you're a Doom super fan or a Doom casual, you really have to hand it to McFarlane Toys. To say they did an amazing job is absolutely an understatement. And it's not just the figure either. The accessories look amazing too. Just so very perfect, dare I say. And visually, that's what I would call this figure overall. Pretty much perfect. Yeah. Fret not, the figure also comes with a little peg stand over here. He's got little peg holes in his feet. Just bring them together and boom, you're done. And of course it says Doom on there, so A represent. Hey Dan Detail are going to get two solid stars and I'll even add in a tiny little sub rating for the inclusion of the super shotgun and the Doom Blade. Is that what it's called? McFarlane absolutely knocked it out of the park, but if you've been a Todd McFarlane fan since, well ever, you know it's never just that simple. But before we get into this, hey, there are multiple versions of this figure available. My ass! You've got the Unicorn Doom guy, the classic Doom guy, variants of both. It's pretty cool that McFarlane has stayed rather consistent with the variants of this guy. And as far as my knowledge goes, most of these figures are actually available skins in the game. Has Todd McFarlane done a Doom 64 skin yet? <laughs> I seriously would like that very, very much. They even made figures of this guy too. And even he's got a variant or two or just one. But given McFarlane's past with big monsters, demons, devils, I wonder why we haven't seen any of the demons made by McFarlane. Seriously, I'd love to see what McFarlane does with demonic meatball boy over here next Monday. Or even big ol' spooter brain over here next Monday. But anyway, now we can get into articulation where... <sighs> Sorry, Mr. Guy, I'm going to have to remove your accessories for the sake of making this easier on myself. We're gonna get a barbell joint in the head and neck over here. In fact, Doom Slayer doesn't even have a neck. It's just a peg. Whoever would have thought Doom Slayer would have had a pencil neck. Said barbell joint can help Doom Slayer look up about that far and even down rather far as well. Not bad, not bad. His little hair dryer of death will be able to rotate on the ball joint that is over here, can move forward and back just a little bit, but I don't know. Yeah, it stays when you pose it back, so that's okay. You're gonna get a little hinge joint right here, which kind of can replicate the folded up position of the hair dryer. From the front, at least. From the side, yeah, not so much. I don't think. Yeah, no. And then the very top of the hair dryer gun is going to have a ball joint, and you'll be able to pose it up and down a little bit with full rotation. God, would you just look at the detail on that? Moving on from the weaponry to the shoulder pads over here, they're going to be on a bar bell joint as shown here so they can go up pretty far they can move from side to side and that's a really great range of movement i wish i could say the same for the fucking arms behold 
That's it. Maybe the little arm was applied too high up on the joint, but still that's pretty lame. Although the arms can rotate all the way around, I just wish they were able to move out a little bit more. Gonna get a nice little clicky over here at the elbow. Full rotation at the wrist. The wrist is also on a hinge over here, so it can move up and down rather decently. I imagine if you move that around, you can get it to move side to side too, but I'm not gonna do that because I learned my lesson the first time. The pain in the ass. I think it's worth mentioning that there is a bit of a bicep swivel over here, but it's very, very minimal. We're gonna get a ball joint over here in the abs and over here in the waist. So first and foremost, you will be able to do the doom copter. Yes. You will be able to bend back pretty far with the help of these two ball joints, and you will be able to bend forward rather decently as well, and with the help of that barbell joint in the neck, Doom Guy can uh, look down pretty far. Yeah. Can also rock from side to side, and yes, you will be able to swivel over there, but then this kind of gets stuck on all the kibble over here, and it's a pain in the butt to realign perfectly when you fully twisted it, so not for me, not today. Doom Guy's Doom legs over here can kick up about that far and squeak. They can move backward pretty decently, not too crazily. Thank God the Doom Slayer cheeks are made out of rubber. Doom Guy can also do the splits rather nicely. You'll get a nice bend at the knee over here, plus a swivel as well. Just be careful of these because they hurt if you put too much pressure on them. And then you're gonna get another ball joint, hinge joint at the ankle over here, so they can point down and point neutrally. It's just, dear God, it's a pain in the butt to try and get these into a swiveling motion. Although I will say, if you are going to do that whole pivoting ankle thing. Yeah, it's not exactly what I would call solid. And that's pretty much it for articulation, and yeah, it could have been a little bit better. Now, despite all the articulation that was just shown off, posability can be kinda here nor there, and this is something that I've always had an issue with when it comes to McFarlane's toys. I mean, for the price, I absolutely got my money's worth in terms of paint and detail, because this thing is a dream come true. It absolutely slaps visually, I just wish that it also slapped technically as well. This is a nitpick on my end, but I'm going to have to give this a half a star in terms of posability because it's just a little on the mid side. No regrets in purchasing this though, absolutely not. My only regret is not getting that Figma Doom Slayer when it was still available on HLJ. Oh, that's like the end all be all of Slayer figures now. Yeah, that half star is gonna count for articulation as well. Again, you get enough of it, it just doesn't do enough. Any hooser, size comparison time. Size-wise, old Doom Guy over here is practically universal. No matter what size figure you pose him with, you can absolutely see him rushing them and just eviscerating them completely. Be the figure bigger than him, smaller than him, or much smaller than him, Doom Guy looks like he's ready to assert his dorky dominance over just about anything. And I'll give McFarlane that. Making this a slightly bigger figure than usual is definitely the vibe. Again, just wish articulation, but I'm not going to throw it on the ground at all. Basically, recommended, don't expect too much in terms of movement. And hey, if you own newer Doom figures and they've improved upon it, please let me know in the comment section down below. So as stated in the video, next Monday, it's going to be another Doom Eternal video, but on Friday, we will be returning to a familiar frontier with the Treadmaster's 10-inch Space Godzilla. And boy, that's a colorful space demon. Oh yeah. See you next time. Peace. Doom Guy's Doom Legs can kick up about, oh Jesus Christ.